Hello, everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, January 13th. Today's topic is our ninth anniversary and open mic, Back to the Future, Classroom 2.0 style. Your show hosts are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffat, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us. Our special guests are all of you. And I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy. Well, actually, here's our live binder for today. And I think I can talk about the live binder. The uh, links for the live binder are on the left edge. They may be across the top, um, but you can select the location for the top, the left edge, or the right edge with a menu that's located right next to the title. Here's the direct link for the live binder, and it's in chat. The recordings are posted on the Archives and Resources page, which is at this direct link. The page is also accessible from the live binder. Here we find out where in the world you're logging in from. Tammy and I are logging in from Southwest Arkansas. Um, Paula logs in from New Orleans. Peggy's logging in from Phoenix, Arizona. I keep forgetting where Susie's logging in from. I'm sorry, Susie. You can also type in the chat where you're logging in from. We usually have an international audience, and we do today as well. Italy and Europe. We've got Virginia, New York, Vermont, Gas City, Indiana for Susie, not her usual place, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts. Again, we always like to see where our participants log in from. It's so nice to see that it's international. Our first question for today is what's your role in education? A classroom teacher K to 12, and if so, please type your grade level in chat. B librarian, C technology specialist coordinator, D college university instructor, E other, and if you do choose E also, please type in the chat. We've got 31% C today, technology specialist coordinator. Our next question, how many Classroom 2.0 live shows have you attended? A, one to three shows, B, four to six shows, C, seven to ten shows, D, more than ten shows, or E, this is my first show. 65% voted D, more than ten shows. Our third question, after I clear those answers, how many Classroom 2.0 shows have you watched as video recordings? A, one to three shows, B, four to six shows, C, seven to ten shows, or D, more than ten shows? F or E, haven't watched the recording yet. And again, I will post these. We've got 28% a, one to three shows. Okay, now I will turn the mic over to Peggy, who will explain today's show format. And welcome, everybody, again. Well, welcome to all of you. This is such an exciting day. We love being able to celebrate our anniversaries on Classroom 2.0 Live. And today, we are celebrating our ninth anniversary, which means we've been doing this since 2009, and we're beginning our 10th year. We're thrilled that we've had 344 webinars, and that's because of the generosity of all of you people who agreed to be presenters for us. Educators are so 
generous with their time. And our, we wouldn't have a show if it weren't for all of you who are willing to take that risk, get online, and share something you've learned, something you've created, anything at all. And uh, we really appreciate you. So thanks to all of you. Um, this is a special show, and we have lots of people participating, so there may be a few glitches as we go along, and I, for one, still am struggling with a cold and a cough, so I hope my voice won't be too annoying, because I'm really excited to be sharing with all of you. So... <clears throat> We're going to do a, a little bit of screen sharing, and we're also um, going to be playing our annual Animoto video where we celebrate our presenters. So I hope all of you be, will be able to see that. And they will be in our live binder, too. So if for any reason you have a problem with that, you'll be able to go back and watch it later. So right now, I would love to share with you our ninth anniversary Animoto, and I hope that some of, the, some of the pictures are a little bit cut off in it just because of the way Animoto works with that, but um, I hope that you'll be able to watch this and that you'll enjoy. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. It was so much fun putting it together. Um, and I don't know if any of you have used Animoto to create this kind of video, but it's always a little bit of a challenge because if you star somebody or you change their image, it 
changes other images around it. So you think you've got it perfect, and then you go back and watch it, and something else has changed. So that's why a couple of the images were a little bit cut off. But it was really fun to put it together. And I can't thank all of you enough who shared as presenters with us this year. We also have an awesome Symbaloo web mix for this year. And Patty Ruffing has done this for a couple of years for us now. And I would love to just bring it up in um, screen sharing so that you can see how it works. So I'm going to um, go to screen sharing and hope this doesn't cause too much of a bandwidth problem. This is our fabulous symbol loop for this year. And Patty has made it so that you can actually watch last year's um, recording of our eighth anniversary. But then every one of these um, mixes are links that take you directly to the presentation in our blog by that person. So just to give you an example, let's see. Let's go to. Desiree's, and this was her presentation, not your grandmother's video. And you get to that directly from the symbol just by clicking on that link. So I know you're going to find this so helpful if there's one you want to go back and look at. But there's another real bonus here. And this is this link right here. It says 2017 presenter roll call. Take a look at this. Patty has created an entire spreadsheet with every show from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. It tells you who the, what the title was who the presenter was, and uh, provides a link directly to the archive for that show, tells you where in the live binder it is, and gives you a little overview of what that show was about. So if you'd like, to, th that will be in our live binder. So if you want to go check that out and go back and watch one of the shows that maybe you hadn't seen, I think that you'll find that summary really helpful to remind you of what um, that show is about. So basically, it's all of our shows from last year. And along the bottom, you can link directly to iTunes U, where you can subscribe to our recordings. You can link directly to our YouTube channel, where you can subscribe to our recordings. You can link directly to all of our live binders, and they are organized by year. So the most current ones are on top, and then they go down all the way back to the beginning. And then here is a link to our Twitter feed, so you can actually follow us there. So I want to say a huge thank you to Patty for creating this for us. It's so valuable. Um, Okay, so um, we also have two amazing word clouds that um, Susie Higley created for us. And you'll be able to see these larger um, when you look at them in the live binder. And we'll share the links um, again for the live binder in just a minute. Um, she used word art to create this this year. And there are two of them. One shows all of our presenters. And I just think it's so attractive, and it is such a great trip down memory lane to see all of the different people who have presented for us. <clears throat> and the next one is all of our show topics. So you can see at a glance the different things that we um, had on our show. And it's wonderful to be able to see those just in one glance. So thank you, Susie, so much for creating those for us. Also want to say a huge, huge thank you to our advisory team. If you weren't aware of this, we have a, 
a team of faithful volunteers that we call our advisory team. And all of us get together regularly to plan our shows. And we brainstorm topics and presenters. We look at the feedback you give us in your surveys and contact people to see if they would be willing to present for us. We couldn't do this without this amazing team. So I say thank you to Paula, to Patty, to Melissa, to Maureen, to Kim Thomas, Susie Higley, Peg Bullock, Wes Fryer, Carolyn Stanley, and Jesse McKinley. And Tony Plort has been on our advisory team, too, although she hasn't been able to make it to quite a few of our meetings, but she's always there supporting us. So thanks to all of you. If any of you might be interested in joining us, we're once a month at the most, and sometimes we even skip months, we get together in this room and do our brainstorming. So it's on the second Tuesday of the month. And um, if you'd like to do that, let me know in the chat, and then I'll contact you after the show and let you know when our next advisory team meeting is. So thanks to all of you. Okay, now, <clears throat> our newbie question for today is, how did Classroom 20 Live get started, and how has it changed over the years? And I'm just going to do a real quick answer to that one. <clears throat> we started back in 2009, and I know many of you were there with us. And our original co-hosts, our founding co-hosts, were me, Kim Case, and Lorna Costantini. And we did it for several years together. And then Lorna and Kim moved on, and we brought in new co-hosts. So Cammie Moore has been a faithful from the beginning. She does all of our closed captioning, which is a real bonus for our webinars. Lori Moffat has been here almost from the beginning and has been a co-host um, for us. She's always terrific about hosting and kicking off our webinars every week and managing the slides as we go along. So huge thank you to Lori, too. And Paula Nagel is a fabulous co-host. I am so glad she said yes when I asked her if she would be willing to become a co-host. I depend on her so much for managing so many of the behind the scene things. And I can't thank you enough, Paula, for all that you do for us. <clears throat> the Classroom 2.0 actually began with Steve Hargadon in a Ning community. And I think now it's grown to maybe about 120,000 people or so. Um, and it started at EduBlogger Con in 2009. And they had their first meet up there. I don't remember for sure how many people were there, but I want to say it was like nine or ten people. And now look at it now. It's just amazing. And Steve has always had this vision for bringing people together to um, collaborate and learn and share with each other. And so he, along the way, after a couple of years, um, well, actually, maybe it was the first year, he started doing some um, podcasts. And he, he would come on and just invite anyone to come on and join him and talk about anything he wanted to talk about. And I uh, contacted him and said, you know, it would be so helpful if you would give us a topic ahead of time so we could plan to come prepared to share some things. And Steve said, well, that's a terrific idea. Why don't you do that? So um, as of that moment, Classroom 2.0 Live was born. And we made it a video rather than an audio podcast. And we um, started our shows with the first official show at the end of 2009 and then continuing on 2010. And each of the shows have changed a little bit. We've changed our format a little bit. We've gotten a little more 
um, consistent with our structure, so everyone knows what to expect when they come. But the heart of the show is our special guest presenters and our featured teachers. And it is so wonderful to hear from so many educators around the world as we do our shows each week. So thanks to all of you. Now, this is one of the <clears throat> things that we shared in our very first webinar. And we asked people to write in and share with us their top 10 tools or top 10 pointers at that time. And I thought it was so much fun to go back and look at. So that's why I'm sharing this with you now. Look at some of the tools that we were using at that time. Some of them we're still using. But some of them have been gone a long time. And that's the joy of the um, uh, Tech tools, you know, you, they're not always going to be there. But but um, I do still use TweetDeck. I don't use my RS feed reader anymore, although I know many people do. Um, but I I rely on my Twitter feed a lot for that. Certainly, lots of iPhone apps, but you know, most of those are gone now. There are a few that are still there, but most of them are gone. Picasso is not there anymore. One True Media is gone. We used to have all of our videos on, um, well, I can't even remember what it, what it was, Blip TV. And um, they're gone now. So now we have them all on YouTube. I still use Digo. How about some of you? Do any of you use Digo? And I do still use Wikispaces. Um, so that was that was fun for me to do. And when we get into our questions, um, we're going to be asking you to share some of your memories. And I hope that you'll be able to add to this list. So we're going to start our open mic conversation now. And Paul is going to take over. You all have microphone permissions. But don't click on the talk button until you're called on. And Paula's going to explain how all of this is going to work. So take it away, Paula. Well, hello, everyone. And it's so exciting to be part of our ninth anniversary celebration. Um, I think I joined in on maybe the second or third week in 2009. Paula, um, your voice is a little soft. Can you get a little closer to your mic? Yep, I can turn it up. Is that better? Yes, that's better. Thanks. Okay, okay. So, um, yeah, I joined I, maybe the second or third week it got going, and it was like I was so scared. It was like I'd never used a live forum like that. And it was so funny because I think I, I typed in hi at the beginning and by at the end, and that was about the extent of my interaction. I know people that know me go, really, Paula? <laughs> but way back then, I was a newbie, and it was um, quite an interesting thing. So moving on, we would like to go to our first open mic question. And everybody that's in our webinar today, we encourage you to go ahead and raise your hand. And I will be calling on you to take the mic. And hopefully we'll get lots of interaction from our audience members. And there are prizes also coming up. So let's think about that, too. So our first question is, <clears throat> when did you first start joining us for our weekly webinars? And which one of you is going to raise your hand and go ahead and share with us? I know we have lots of eager people in our audience today. So if you go to the over here on the hand uh, below where you are listed and click on the third icon over, <clears throat> it'll put a number by your name. There we go. Hey, Lori. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Lori. Thanks, Paula. I started joining in 2010, actually a few months after I met Tammy Moore in a collab, in, at the time, Illuminate classroom and uh, was also one of those lurkers sort of uh, saying hello at the beginning and bye at the end. Thank you, Lori. Okay, I see Peg V is up. I started in December of 2016 
I kept seeing Peggy George's name everywhere on every webinar I went to, and then one day we connected and she asked me to be on. So it's been a pleasure. Well, we are so glad that you did find Peggy online and that you joined our team. We love having you. Um, okay, did I miss any hands for that question? Not yet. I saw a lot of people typing in the chat. There are a lot of us that were here from the beginning. And we have some that are more recent additions, which we love. Um, and we certainly hope that you will spread the word far and wide to your PLN and get them to join us on Saturdays. All right, moving on. Okay, our second question. What are the biggest changes in tech integration you've witnessed since we began Classroom 2.0 Live back in 2009? Seems like a, so long ago. Okay, Peg D, you're up. All right, I didn't know I had my hand raised. Sorry. <laughs> it's been crazy, though. I remember being invited to be an Educate America teacher, which gave me computers in my classroom and a TV in my classroom where I could show things, and that was huge. So to be able to walk around with iPads and Mirror now has been such a transformation. Um, times have changed. All right, Wesley, up. Up for you. Hey, I I hope you can hear me. I'm in a different different setup. Um, is this? Can you guys hear me? Okay, awesome. Uh, I would say the way in which the the ease with which we can interact has been dramatically different, right? Because blogging was kind of the main thing in you know the mid I don't know it wasn't the main thing we had some podcasts but it was really challenging in the mid 2000s and then even into 2009 we had an explosion of tools um, but I guess social media right has replaced so much of the interaction that happens on blogs with comments and so the rise of Facebook and Twitter and I guess the mainstreaming of social media interaction has changed it and it's brought a lot more people into the conversations. Um, and it's changed, you know, the platforms, and we're doing a lot more with Seesaw, and we're, you know, blogging is still there, but the, um, you know, the power of the tools and the ease with which both students, teachers, and parents can interact has really changed dramatically since 2009. So true, Wesley. I remember getting on social media back in 2009 and then going to um, ISTE, and going, oh my gosh, I know these people. I've been interacting with them. So that was fun. Okay, Jesse, you're up. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I um, had a little problem with my headphones. I think one of the big, biggest changes I've seen in um, uh, ed tech or tech innovation is the change from teacher um, interacting with their students or with the, with the students uh, with technology uh, to more of uh, um, students having more of the power, being able to cast to a device or being able to um, uh, collaboratively share um, a document has, uh, uh, is one of the biggest changes I've kind of seen from, uh, in uh, this year from, from previous years since we started. Thank you, Jeff. Um, yes, it's so true to get our students more involved and connected is such an Awesome thing to be able to do. Okay, Susie, your turn. All right, I hope you can hear me okay over the noise at Starbucks. <laughs> I actually have a memory from Jennifer Cossett, who was unable to be with us today. And she says, when you started in 2009, I had no interest in computers at all, but my students were super excited about this thing called Facebook. Well, I got them to create a profile for a character in Romeo and Juliet and send other characters, which movies they'd watch, music they'd listen to. This was a great idea until I realized Facebook, Facebook was blocked in our district, and I had to co-conspire with students to unblock it so it would work on it, they could work on it at school. That was the best ever. Kids were so interested, they continued to speak in character for months after the assignment was over. We've come so far in so many ways, but blocking still happens in many, many districts. When I think of how much I know about EdTech now, I am absolutely amazed compared to where I was then. 
thank you for that trip down memory lane. Well, thank you, Susie, and I'm glad your students and you were able to convince your district to go ahead and open Facebook for you. All right, Maureen, it's your turn. Oh, hi. I actually just saw what I was going to say in the comments. Now we can actually do tech integration. It used to be just a computer lab, and we didn't have the ability to integrate tech across the curriculum and across all the disciplines, all the grade levels. Now we have the tools, and we can actually really integrate it instead of just having a lab and skills. So true, and uh, it's just amazing when we look back over the last decade how things have changed. Okay, all right, we're ready for our our first drawing, and we hope that's going to work. Um, what we'll be doing each time one of these slides comes up. We have a special prize, and um, there are certain people that are going to be eligible for different prizes. Some of them it will say, all of you. Some of it will say, like this one, if you have been a presenter for Classroom 20 Live any time, we want you to raise your hand, and then you will be eligible for this drawing. And I'm going to use a randomizer. And I'm going to enter the number of all the hands that are raised. So get those hands up there. Excellent. Keep them coming. Wes, Shelley. Yes, Suzanne. Wes and Shelley need to get their hands up. No. <laughs> um, trying to figure out that Apple TV. Uh, let's see. Who else are we missing? Okay, I think that's it. So um, we have 11 hands up, and this is for Jennifer Casata's amazing book called Social Media, which she did a webinar on. So I'm going to put my numbers in my randomizer, and, and the winning number is nine. So if you are the winner, will you type your uh, name in the chat for prize number one? And we'll make sure you get what you need. Also type your email address. And we'll remove all those email addresses before we post the chat log so that won't, won't go public. So if you uh, will lower your hands now, we will move on so that all those numbers will change for our next drawing. And we'll move right on to our next question. Paula? Oops, if you click talk, huh? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Uh, so what are some tech tools or strategies that you learned about by participating in Classroom 2.0 Live? Please share any takeaways that you have. And while we're waiting for hands to go up, I can just remember, oh gosh, there's so many. I think Edmodo was one of the first things that I learned about and, and tried out with my students and was so excited that we could have our little walled garden. Um, yeah, I remember learning about Symbaloo also, Doug. I mean, so many of the tools I learned, I definitely learned from the show. All right, Tony, over to you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, can we you can. Hear me? Yes, okay. we can. Thank you. Um, one of the things that I learned about was print friendly. Um, that is one that Peggy shared at one of our um, open mic nights a few years back, and I have used it, I would say, every, almost every day when I am checking in, you know, finding out a, a website I want, and I want to keep it and print it off, instead of getting all the ads, if you click on print friendly, uh, you it makes a PDF of that information for you. Uh, that one has been one that I've used and shared at school, and um, it, it's it's been my go-to for couple years now. 
Thank you for sharing. Anybody else? Okay, Patty, you're up. Well, I have to say that I was first exposed to Breakout EDU through Classroom 2.0, and I was so excited after the presentation. I went and bought two kits, and we've been using them, and it's great. Isn't it fun to play Breakout EDU? Okay, Lori, you're, it's your turn. I learned about Scratch here, and shortly after that, I was using Scratch with uh, algebra students online and have also made some Scratch courses. And I know you are one person I would definitely go to for your Scratch expertise. Thank you for sharing. Okay, anyone else? Um, I want to just say thank you to all of our featured teachers that we've had on the show. Every time um, one of them share, I always have some takeaways to go back to my classroom with. So be thinking as we go through our presentation today as to whether you'd love to be a featured teacher or if you know someone who you would like to nominate. All right, question four. We all know, remember what Peggy shared with us at the beginning, web tools come and they go. Which web tool did you have to let go of and why? Did you find a replacement for it? Maureen, you're up. Okay, well, unfortunately, I had to let go of, um, oh gosh, VoiceThread, sorry, um, VoiceThread this year, just because I didn't have enough people in my school using it, I still love the tool, but I had introduced Flipgrid, and we are now using Flipgrid much more than we used VoiceThread. So we let go of VoiceThread, which I loved, and we have Flipgrid, which I kind of am crazy about. And um, Wes, you're up. You're up. Well, Posturus was definitely my favorite tool, you know, around 2013, because it let you email any kind of media to an address and, you know, you know go online. Um, you know, there's been a lot of different tools uh, that... <sighs> They do similar kinds of things, but nothing that that, does, that actually replaces the whole the whole thing. So, and most recently, Storify, you know, is one that I've really loved to archive when you have an event with a hashtag and being able to capture that. And I haven't found anything to replace that. So, I'm not answering the second part of the question very well because sometimes these tools go away and we don't have an exact replacement. So, I miss miss those both um, and hope. Especially in the case of Storify, that, that something else is there. If anybody knows or has found something else. Please let us know. Thank you for sharing. Uh, probably my biggest um, sadness was, well, actually two of them, um, Glogster and Kid Blog, when they became paid for services, I had to kind of let them go because I didn't have the money to afford to buy them. Uh, for Glogster, luckily our school has a discovery subscription and their board builder, which has now become Studio, is a very similar tool. Um, as far as Kid Blog, I am now using Seesaw. So we have, we're able to let go and keep moving on. Patty, you're up. Well, talking about blogs, um, I first got involved with blogging with my kids back in 2007 with David Warlick's class Blogmeister. And he did a marvelous job with that for so many years, but you know, gradually it had to be retired. And I did go to KidBlog, and I even went with the paid version. But um, I'm moving out of KidBlog now, and I'm into the seesaw, which is wonderful. And also, EduBlogs has, even though they do have a charge, it's so so reasonable. And I am back to being an EduBlogs fan. Um. Is EduBlogs open to young students? Um, yes, the teacher can uh, set all the parameters for um, what you allow your students to do. There's a lot of control from the, the teacher panel. 
All right. Well, thank you for sharing that. Peg V, you're up. Um, it didn't really go away. The web tool that I find that I've let go of is Google Classroom for my second grade classroom because I find that Seesaw has everything I could want anymore, it seems. Um, so they're two both existing and wonderful tools, but I think in my second grade classroom I do prefer Seesaw. I'm sure for second graders it is probably Seesaw is so much easier to use. And it's so much fun to see them take their pictures and annotate and record their videos. And it's wonderful how easy it is to share out with parents. So yeah, it's become an awesome tool. All right, let's move on to our next poll. I mean, our next open mic. Oh, nope, sorry, we have a prize drawing up next. All right, Peggy. OK, so here we go. This prize drawing is for, get ready, anyone who has been an educator for more than 20 years. Because we think you're so awesome that you are still learning and participating in professional development on your own time. So raise your hand if you have been an educator for more than 20 years. And I'm sure that's almost everybody in this room. Get those hands up there. And then after we select our winner, um, and if you've already won a prize, um, don't put your hand up so that we'll make sure that we spread these all out. Um, and I think that this is a prize donated by Jesse McKinley. So thank you, Jesse. OK, now I'm going to do. Stop raising your hands so that the numbers don't change on anyone. Once again, we have 11 hands up. So I'm going to redo this. And our winner is number six. So congratulations, Lori. You're the winner. And please enter your information in the chat for us. Thanks. I love the Amazon gift cards because you can just get anything you want with them. OK, Paula, back to open mic questions. Congratulations, Lori. All right, question number five. What new technologies are available that you still haven't worked with yet? Which ones do you think you will try out in 2018? And I'm going to go ahead and start this off while people are still putting down their hands from the prize drawing, or I'm going to call on you to take the mic. <laughs> but anyhow, the one that I'm looking forward to um, using is Flipgrid. I wanted to try it out last year, but it was blocked in my district, and they have finally unblocked it. All right, Gary, I'm going to turn it over to you. I'd like to work more with uh, augmented reality. Any particular tools or um, things that you want to do with that? Uh, no, I teach high schoolers, so I'd like to have them um, uh, use that more as a way to share. I think it's an up-and-coming technology, and so for their future, just have them understand it better. All right, well, thank you, Gary, for sharing that. Eileen, you're up next. Uh, hi, I'd like to try uh, Seesaw this year and um, been watching different people and what the fa fabulous things they've been doing. So ch looking forward to trying that. Ho hopefully you'll be able to come back and tell us how much you enjoyed it. Jesse, it's your turn to share. The um, technology we use um, uh, uh, is the uh, augmented reality also and virtual reality, but um, I also want to do more with with, uh, with my kids, especially with these uh, younger kids. Uh, with my third and fourth graders this year, we worked with uh, little bit kits, uh, uh, the uh, magnetic electronic components, and they really enjoyed it. But anything for the the lower kids, so um, I'm trying to invest some money into um, getting uh, dot and dash robots. And I'm sure they will enjoy those. Good luck with that. Wes, what would you like to share, uh, work on this year? Well, Shelly and I are going to co-lead a after-school scratch club for um, 
mainly third and fourth graders, and I really want to get into some of the sensors and ways in which Scratch can interact with like LED lights and you know motion motor motors for motion in like toys that you would hack. I, I haven't done any of that kind of thing, and so I think that bridge between the coding virtually and then you are making an object do things, you know, following your, your instructions is really engaging. And I'm especially thinking that will appeal to a wider number of students. Like I'm thinking of our daughter and, and other uh, girls, because especially once they get to high school, we just have, you know, classes called Python and things like that. And I really think the robotics and the, the ways in which, you know, real objects can be um, integrated with coding is, a, is powerful and also very in, potentially interesting and, and engaging for students. Thank you, Wes. Um, yes, yeah, coding is so great. All right, Patty, it's your turn. I agree with some uh, of what other people have said. Like, uh, I'd like to get into Flipgrid and some augmented reality. But I think what I have to do is uh, have a new mindset because I'm now at a school that's an all iPad school coming from a school that was a Chromebook school. And there are so many things I was able to do with Chromebooks that I have to figure out how I can do uh, similar things with iPads when some of those same uh, Google apps don't work as well on the iPad. So I'm looking for lots of ideas related to that. Well, maybe we need to have some thoughts on people we can get to our show to help share ideas on that. All right, moving on. We now have another prize drawing. Peggy. Okay, drawing number three. Bless her heart, Paula has donated her wonderful book that she co-authored with Billy Krakauer and Jerry Blumengarten, who you all probably know as Cyberry Man. And so if you would like to be the owner of this book, Paula, is it an e-book or a hard copy book? Uh, it is a hard copy. Okay. So if you would like to have this book, raise your hand, and then Paula will get your information. If you, if you um, put your email address in the chat, we'll get your information so she can mail it to you. This is such a fabulous book. And you know that Paula has done tons of things with mystery location calls, mystery Skype calls, and other wonderful global collaboration projects, and they're all discussed in this book. So it is a great resource. If you don't have it, you're going to want it. I was going to, I said go to the next slide for assistance just because um, I thought you might want a refresher on the various shows of the year, but I don't think we really need that. <laughs> yes, a very creative cover. I love that. Okay, stop raising your hands. We have 10 hands up, and I'm going to go to the randomizer and see if we get a different number, and we do. And our winner is number two. So congratulations, Jesse. All right, Jesse, uh, put your email in the chat, and I will get with you to get a... I mean, a mailing address and get it sent off to you this weekend. And I will also sign it for you. <laughs> All right. Um, if everyone wants to put their hand down so that we can move on to our next uh, question. All right. How do you find out the best practices when you try to use a new technology in your classroom? Where do you go? Who do you get with? Et cetera. Okay, Jesse, I'm going to turn the mic over to you. Uh, the best practices I, I like to uh, out um, first is um, Twitter. I we use Twitter a lot in um, at my school, and um, I, I, there's a lot of uh, uh, connect with on on Twitter to find out what the best practices are. Yeah, yeah Twitter tends to be my go-to also. 
Um, and Peggy George, it's up to you. I'm sorry to keep talking, but I just can't let some of these pass up. Um, I have learned so, so much about best practices from my Twitter PLN, more than any place else. No matter what, I can get new resources, I can get answers to questions, I can get um, lots of examples of things that teachers have created, and we know that the most valuable resources we get are those that have been created by other teachers and people who are vetting these resources themselves. And it's not just doing an internet search and seeing what comes up. I just value that so much. So even though I don't have a classroom to practice in, I have lots of things that I do with technology, and that's how I learn about them. And then the next best part is that I can share all that stuff in Twitter with other people. So even if I don't have a classroom, I know they're looking for something and I can share it with them. One of the things that I find about Twitter is even if you're new, fairly new to Twitter or you're not a huge Twitter user, if you can figure out a hashtag that goes with your um, you know, your question, and use that, you will get responses. You don't have, you know, back in the day, you had to have followers to get a connection going. But now with the hashtag, um, like right now, I'm going to be following Flipgrid Fever because I'm trying to learn lots about Flipgrid since I now am able to use it. Um, Seesaw, you know, a lot of these um, tools that are used also have chats on Twitter. And you can learn a lot by doing a search for Seesaw Chat or, uh, in my case, I'm using Pika Pack for social emotional learning in my classroom. So Pika Chat is a good one to follow and different things like that. And also a lot of these places have Facebook pages also. So best practices are all around. And one of my favorite best practices is to follow Peggy George wherever she goes. <laughs> All right. Um, anyhow, we are up for drawing number four, Peggy. See? We have prizes all the way through, so you just have to keep paying attention and keep entering. So this one is a prize for all advisory team members and show hosts. So if you're one of those, raise your hand if you haven't won a prize yet. This is an amazing book. I have it, I've read it, I've shared it, and I'm sharing it as an ebook from Stephen Anderson, who did a, um, a webinar for us not too long ago in 2017, but it was on a different topic. Um, so it was on accessible devices. But this is all about content curation and how to avoid information overload, which is such a big issue if we're using social media at all. And I know all of us are. So get your hands up. Anyone else have a hand to go up yet? Patty? Yes. Anybody else? OK. And here we go then. Don't raise any more hands. We have one through seven. And the winner is number five. Congratulations, Tammy. All right. This is so much fun. All right, Paula, back to you. All right, thank you. Congratulations, Tammy. All right, um, our next question. If you were asked to do a PD session, what topic would you present and why? And would you prefer to do it face-to-face -face as a virtual webinar or an EdCamp type session? And why would you want to do it that way? So while we're waiting for others to raise their hand, oh, I'll never mind. Wes is ready to go. So I'll let Wes take it over. I'll take it over. 
So I would so I would do two. Um, the one one that's a little more exciting on an instructional level, just uh, digital citizenship and the things that schools are doing to get conversations going in regular classrooms with digital citizenship. Um, we're doing a lot with that. But then the other thing would be safety and security. Uh, connecting. I'm, I'm a technology director now, and so. We just had our teachers all, you know, go to two-step verification, but we just hear all about, you know, meltdown, specter, viruses, vulnerabilities, and so, you know, that's not as instructional, but I mean, if you're not being safe, it's, you know, it's the base of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and so conversations about safety are definitely part of, you know, digital citizenship as well as, you know, just safe computing, so those two topics. And I'm sure lots of people would like to attend those topics that you would present on. Um, Patty, <laughs> Patty had me laughing about um, that she thinks this is a trick question. I'm not quite sure what she meant by that, but I think I have an idea. <laughs> All right, Patty, take it away. I I think we're we're scouting for possible presenters, maybe. <laughs> But I think a good, but I think a good topic would would be um, a copyright, uh, you know, fair use. And I know we had somebody about that, but I feel it's it's something that um, just needs to be presented over and over. It's really important. Okay, what I was going to say is that. Um, I love presenting, and I think that I would, I'm would i comfortable presenting in any of these formats, but what I really enjoy are the EdCamp um, style, the, the unconference, where it's not so scripted, it's more interactive between those who have something to share and those who want to learn instead of a, you know, sit and get kind of presentation. There's the tossing back and forth of ideas. And I really, really, really like that. So, Peggy, I see that you've raised your hand, so take it away. This is such an interesting question to me. And people talk about it all the time. And so often, recently, I've been hearing in boxer groups and on Twitter, people saying how much they prefer the face-to-face -face interaction. But there's so much we can't do without the virtual interaction. So, and because I can get around really well, I rely a lot on the virtual opportunities. So I actually had to increase my bandwidth um, limits with my internet provider because of all the webinars I go to. But that's how I learn. And I love being able to participate in the chat. So it's not just a passive experience. So that's why I love doing these webinars. I do love EdCamp sessions, though. And when you can have conversations with people and you're not just sitting and getting, um, that's really valuable because you can ask questions, you can share, and you can really dig deeper on that. So as far as topics, I would probably be sharing how I do all of these things because um, lots of times people don't know where to get started, where to find good webinars, what to do. So that's why I did a webinar for us here on that very topic at the beginning of last year. And it was a great one. Thank you for sharing, Peggy. I just noticed what time it is and didn't realize that we have uh, gone past the hour, but we have lots of prizes, so please don't leave the room yet. Okay, and speaking of, we are on prize drawing number five, and this is open to any international participant from our countries outside the U.S. because we love our international audience, and some of them are here faithfully every week. So please raise your hand. I know we have some, and I know some had to leave. I completely lost track of the time. I can't believe how fast it has gone by. But stay, because we have probably another seven or eight more prizes. So we'll be going through all those as quickly as we can. If you're out of the United States, and that includes Canada, uh, raise your hand. Anybody else? 
Peggy, can I raise my hand for Tatiana? Because she's left yes. the room, but she's always here. Yes, okay. she is. That's good. So you can enter that in the chat if she happens to be the winner. Okay, I'm going to do the random drawing for five people. And the winner is number four. Congratulations, Paula. Tatiana, or Tiziana will be the winner. Thank you. Yes, she's, uh, I believe, from Italy. Is that correct? And she, yes, I that's swear, correct. That's week. great. Okay. She's going to love this book, too. All right. So, moving on. This is our last question, but we have quite a few prizes right after this one, so please stay in the room. Okay, our last open mic question as we move forward in 2018. What new topics would you like us to cover and which topics should we revisit or update on our upcoming shows? All right, Wes Fryer, you're up. I'd say digital smart assistants. They're everywhere. I don't know how many people have them in their classroom, but the whole march of artificial intelligence and the way ways in which we're, you know, moving to interacting with our voice and the kinds of questions that can be answered, but also the kinds of interactions with these, you know, I'll say this, you know, Queen A, um, to not say her name in case somebody's playing this out loud, but anyway, uh, smart assistant, um, that would be a great one. Yes, that would be very interesting. Um, even things like how to use um, your voice assistant on your phone. Okay, anyone else want to take the mic on topics? If not, we're going to go through our remaining prizes, I'm assuming, Peggy. Yes, and I've got I've got a few of the closing slides mixed in here, but let's uh, go quickly through these. Our next gift is an Amazon gift certificate, twenty five dollars donated by Patty Ruffing, and everyone is eligible for this. So if you think you might want a twenty five dollar gift certificate, get your hand up right now. Anyone, everyone is eligible for this one. Great. Keep them coming. Okay, last call. All right, we have 13 hands. Don't lower your hand until we get our winner. And the winner is number 13. Congratulations, Lucien. And Quick announcements, we have some great shows coming up. Come back and join us every Saturday that you can. Next Saturday, Jesse McKinley and Stacey Aguilar are going to do a show on a special challenge activity that they use both for professional development and classroom. We won't have a show on January 27th because we want to go to Educon 2018, and you can participate in that virtually. So you don't have to go to Philly, and it's all free. So just so you know, that is that link is in our live binder, and it's January 26th, 27th, and 28th. So we won't have a show that day so we can participate. And then we have a great show coming up on February 3rd with Deneen Lashinsky. Um, and it's all about alternatives to traditional PD. So we're really looking forward to that. And now our next prize, drawing number seven. Anyone who has shared a link or an idea in the chat is eligible. So raise your hands and let's get another winner. By the way, this book is fabulous. This is the newest EduMatch snapshot in Education 2017, crowdsourced with articles, chapters by lots of amazing educators, edited by Sarah Thomas, who is also amazing, and it is two volumes. 
tips for the classroom and professional practice. It is amazing. So we are going to have three winners for this. So keep your hand up if you'd like to have this. And then <clears throat> once, and keep it up. Um, Let's see, after I announce the first winner, lower your hand, and then I'll do the drawing again. So first one here, we have six people. And I'm going to say, even if you've won before, go ahead and raise your hand. Let's just take a chance. And it's OK. So we have, let's see, eight, eight hands up. All right. And the winner, the first winner, is number one. So congratulations, Maureen. All right. Uh, put it in the chat, Maureen. OK. And our next winner is number five. Oh, Michael. All right. Yeah, Michael Michelle. I, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. So congratulations. And our third winner is Okay, don't keep changing the numbers. All right, we have one through nine. And the winner is number six. Congratulations, Nabila. All right. And I'm skipping through these closing slides because I want to finish up with our prize drawings. This is also for anyone who took the mic to speak. So you can keep your hand up if you like and raise it again. Anyone who took the mic to speak is eligible for this one. Uh, that's neat, Katie. Thank you. Great. We so appreciate that you're willing to raise your hand and get on the mic and speak during these shows because what you have to share is so valuable for all of us. So $25 Amazon gift certificate. And we have, it looks like, 10 hands raised. And I'm using the random number generator for my tool to pick these. And the winner is number three. Congratulations, Katie. All right. Be sure to enter your information in the chat. OK, and another $25 Amazon gift certificate donated by our wonderful friend and advisory team member, Kim Thomas. And this is for anyone who shared a link or idea in the chat, even if you've um, one before, keep your hand up. So if you shared a link or an idea in the chat, you're eligible for this one. Hands up. All right, and I'm stopping at 10. And the winner is number one, Jen Wagner. Congratulations. All right. And our next winner. Another $20 Amazon gift certificate donated by Jesse McKinley. Thank you to all our advisory team members who stepped up and so generously shared with the show and with all of you. So this is everyone, anyone at all, can raise your hand for this one. All participants are eligible. OK. Last call. We have. 11, 12, 13. Anybody else? OK, I'm changing the number to 13. And the winner is number 6. Congratulations, Maureen. Number 6 is the winner. Enter it in the chat, please. <coughs> And the next drawing is the amazing Google Infused Classroom ebook by Holly Clark and Tanya Averth. And it, they did a great webinar on some of the tips and things that came out of that book for us. You can go back and watch the webinar. So it's a, it's a guidebook for making thinking visible and especially for amplifying student voice. Everyone is eligible for this. And let's see, we have, keep those hands coming. OK, looks like we have 13. 
and the winner is number nine. Peg Bolak, congratulations, Peg. All right. Good job. Okay. And I think this is our last drawing. This is a fabulous resource. This is a great ebook that West Fryer has created and donated. And we're going to do two drawings for this. If you don't have this, you're going to want to have it. So uh, I'm not saying anyone who shared a link or an idea in the chat is eligible. I'm saying you're all eligible. So if you would like to win this, we'll do two drawings. Raise your hand now. And mapping media to the curriculum. I mean, it has resources for everything. Storytelling. I mean, this image doesn't begin to show what's in it. Um, screencasting, all kinds of things. OK, looks like we have 12 to choose from. Change my number here. And the winner is number two. Let's see. Three. Number three. Tony Floyd, congratulations. All right, now keep your hands up because we're going to do one more. One more drawing with the same hands up. Let's see, 12 hands up. Yeah, keep your hands up. And the winner is number 11. Eileen, congratulations. I hope you're here so you can enter your information in the chat. So that's great. You're going to love that book. So. We want to wrap up by just saying a special thanks to all of you for helping us celebrate our ninth anniversary, for getting on the mic and sharing, for sharing in the chat. And I hope that you'll come back and join us as often as you can this year or subscribe to our recordings. So thanks to everyone. Have a great weekend.